Hi everyone, this is Helen. If you're here, it means you're interested in setting up your own Kubernetes cluster with Cube ADM. So today I'm going to be demonstrating how to set up your own Kubernetes cluster on Amazon EC2 instance, which will be our server, and then we'll be using Cube ADM too. Okay, so as we know, setting up our own Kubernetes cluster is very, um, can be beneficial. Um, instead of using some playgrounds and all that you can set up your own cluster for learning purposes or for your uh, for production use or uh, even for you know dev environment okay so i'm gonna show you the documentation right now so this is the documentation how did i get here i simply came here and type google.com and then type install or installing cube ADM press enter and this is it here I'm gonna click on installing cube ADM and that is the page here so let me close this so having your own Kubernetes cluster can be very beneficial number one you have um, greater control and flexibility okay so when you set up your own cluster you have full control over the configuration and deployment of the cluster you can customize the configuration to meet your specific needs and requirements and you can even choose which component to include or exclude and again you have a better performance okay um you have a better performance having your own cluster because the resources belongs to you okay the resources in the cluster belongs to you so you are not sharing it with other users okay so for instance when you are using your playground for instance um you might not really have that better performance but when you have yours um you definitely experience a better performance and again it will also give you a, a deeper learning experience because um setting up your own kubernetes cluster um you know it will help it to better help you to understand how you know all these things are being put together okay so it is a gain if you know how to set up your own kubernetes cluster it will also help you you know to troubleshoot during troubleshooting you also it will help to deepen your knowledge in um having your cluster all right so um to get started in this page as you can see before you begin um we actually have some requirements here that you must meet in your server so the server will be using have to um the servers you know have to meet up with this requirement here so let me go over to aws management console i mean Oh, this is ec2 dashboard so the first thing we'll be doing is to create our server our master node and um the worker node okay so if you're watching this video i believe you're familiar with um the worker node the master node okay even if you are not i'm gonna show you how to set it up okay and that will be very beneficial in learning kubernetes so i'm gonna click on launch instance here launch instance and i'll be creating my master node first i'll name it master if i scroll down we'll be using amazon linux so i'm gonna choose amazon linux too and then going down the instance type we'll be using is um according to the requirement right so i'll be using t2 uh, medium so that can give us two um two cpu and four gigabyte memory so i'll select this scroll down i'll be selecting my key pair if you don't have a key pair go ahead and click on create new key pair and then select it from here so i'm gonna select mine and coming down here under network settings i'll click edit so i'll be creating a security group and i'll name it my master sg i'll use the same name here okay so already has ssh rule um, that is fine i'll click on add security group rule and i'm gonna select um http is this really necessary okay yeah so i'm gonna make the source to be from anywhere 
and I'm gonna add another security group rule. I will okay so um before I proceed I would like to show you the required ports that that is required so come in here you can see required port if I click on this you see we have required port for comp uh, for both control plane and the worker nodes okay so that means you need to open all these ports in your server and when it comes to when you come to worker node these are the required ports okay so um because this is not production i'll go ahead and i would like to just select all traffic okay to save our time but please in production you need to be uh, security conscious you don't need to you don't have to open all traffic please okay so um make this one to be the source should be from anywhere and that is fine so on that number of instances i'm gonna make this two okay so i can as well use it for the um for my worker node okay all i need to do is to change the name from master to worker node okay so that is basically um that is what i need to do here okay all right i'll click on launch instance Okay, I'll click on view all instances. Okay, I'm gonna give it few uh probably a minute to get ready. All right, so why it is still initializing? I want to rename this one um, master. I want to make it the worker node. Sorry. Worker node is fine. Alright, so the next thing I would do right now is to SSH into my master server, okay? So all I need to do is to select this master here, copy the public IP address. I'm actually using, um, I have SSH client, okay? So, um, but it can actually connect from here. So if you select your server, just click on connect. So you can use EC2 instance connect. So just come here and click on connect and it will open up here. But I have my, uh, I'm gonna be using git bash to connect. So I'll open up my terminal, having copied the public IP address. Did I copy it? Okay. So over here, I'm gonna run my command ssh-i, and um, the name of my key pair is Windows Key. Dot spam ec2 as the username of my instance, and then at the public IP address, press enter. Type yes. And that is it. I've connected to my master. So I uh, want to be a root user. sudo dash i. So the next thing I want to do is to update the package manager of this server. Yum update. Press enter. Yes. And this is now updated so if I go to if I go over to the documentation let's see what we have next if I scroll down here installing a container runtime is actually what we need to do next so we have different container runtimes and you know we can run a cluster without a uh, container runtime 
So by default, Kubernetes uses the container runtime interface to interface with your chosen container runtime. So if I click on see container runtime, let me open it in a new tab. Scroll down, we have container D, we have cryo, docker engine, Mirantis container runtime. So we'll be making use of docker engine. So all I need to do now is to install docker on the master. So all I need to do is to run, uh, run this command, yum install docker that um, dash i press enter all right so docker has been installed the next thing i'd have to do is to enable by running system ctl enable docker press enter and that has been that has been enabled so the next command is to um i would like to start the docker okay and docker started let's check the status And my docker is running okay so let's go over to the documentation and see the next step of this cluster setup let me close this one close this one Okay, so after installing Docker runtime, coming down here, um, the next step is to install kubeadm, kubelet, and kubectl. All right. So to install this, we are using uh, we are using Amazon Linux. Okay, so we should go with this Red Hat based distribution. So over here, we just have to run this command here. And what will this command do? So basically, this command actually will help to. This one will add the Kubernetes repository to the System Package Manager configuration file, okay, which is located here. And then the next thing, um, this command will help to set the SE Linux in permissive mode, which will disable it temporarily, um, so it can avoid conflict during our. Um, during the installation of Kubernetes uh, packages, all right. So um, we'll also run this command, and then this one, this command, um, pretty much will help to install the kubelet, kubeadm, and kubectl. Okay, and then lastly, it will enable the kubelet, um, the, it will enable the kubelet service to automatically start on system boot okay so that is all this that is what this command is all about so i'm gonna copy this one go to my terminal first of all let me clear my screen paste this here so once you paste it oh you press enter and that is it i'm gonna go back to copy this one Okay, go back. Okay, now run this here. So this is to install kubelet, kubeadm, and kubectl. Right, so after this, I will run this command sudo systemctl enable. So copy this command. All 
awesome and the last command I'm gonna run is to um, is to restart kubelet should the system CTO restart kubelet and that is done okay so let's see the next step of this setup coming back to my documentation um configuring a c group driver okay we are using um the runtime we are using is docker so we don't really need to configure this c group driver okay so um coming over here um creating a cluster with qbadm let me check what we have in this page Okay, so now we'll, um, we initialize our control plane. Okay, so that is actually the next step. We'll be initializing the control plane. And why do we need to initialize? Okay, so running kubeadm. So actually it's kubeadm we need to initialize. Okay, so it's actually a crucial step in setting up Kubernetes cluster. Um, it will help to initialize the control plane components and set up the necessary configuration files and certificate for cluster to function properly. Okay, so how do we set it up? How we can set it up is by running kubeadm init, the necessary argument. So the first command to run is to copy this one here cube in it I'm gonna open my notepad and um, so I actually have the command here but just to show you how I got this command over here so keep a uh, cube ADM in it and then going back um, consideration about API server advertise address and control plane endpoint so I'll need to copy this API server advertise address. So this can be used to set up the advertise address for this particular control plane nodes API server. So let me copy this. Paste it here. And how do I get this address? Uh, I, I, I'm supposed to get this address by um getting the ipv4 address of my master server okay that is the ec2 instance we are using for this setup so if i go over to the aws management console i should get my ip um so uh, i'll be using private ip address so i'll copy this one and paste it here okay and then um, the next argument will be so I want us to use Calico Network Calico Network Okay, install Calico. I'm gonna open this one. Under Kubernetes, self manage on prem. Okay, so this is the one we actually need. Install Calico networking and network policy for on prem um, deployment. I'll click on this. Right, so what is this Calico Network? So this is actually a solution for Kubernetes clusters. It enables um, 
you know, secured and scalable communication between ports and nodes. So this will provide network connectivity and policy enforcement for Kubernetes workload. So um, there are actually other networking solution, but um, this Calico is mainly used for containers. So let's go with Calico network. And um, if I scroll down, There's an option I'm looking for here. Install Calico with Kubernetes API data store 50 nodes or less. Okay, let's explore this. Okay, it's actually the same. Okay, so over here you can see um, if you're using port CIDR, um, this is actually the CIDR range. Okay, so I would like to use this for the port network CIDR. So I'm going to copy this. Okay, so the port side that over here okay so this command should look like this sorry cost okay so this is actually the command we need for initializing the kubeadm okay so all you need to do is to use this command and ensure you you replace your private ip with this and then you can as well use the same um pod network side that i'm using over here so i'm gonna copy this command So in my master, I uh, will run this command and press enter. Okay. Wait for it to put the required images for setting up our cluster and um, perform some actions. Okay, so it should actually give us some um, command to we'll run this and then also di display a, a join command we can use for joining the worker node. Okay, that is fine. So um, to start using your cluster, you need to run the following as a regular user. Okay, so these are actually the command I should run or I can use the alternative command. Okay, so let me exit and run this as a regular user. So I'm going to copy this and run it one after the other. Paste it. Copy this one. And then copy the third one. All right, so um, alternatively, you can run this as a, a, a rich user. That is fine. Okay, so we are actually, we've successfully set up our master, um, our master node. Okay, so let's confirm what we've done. If I run, okay, first of all, let me clear this. So if I run kubectl, get nodes can see i just have the control node and the control plane rather and it is actually saying it's not ready yes it's it won't be ready because we need to still set up the the pod network okay but before then i would like to ssh into the worker node and also you know 
um, run some command which should run there so um, let me go over to AWS management console select the worker node copy the public IPv4 address open another terminal So I'm going to run SSH-I um, Windows key.prem EC2 user adds the IP address press enter are you sure you want to connect yes and I've connected to the server um, so let me be a root all right so let me install or rather update the package manager of this server by running yum update press enter yes all right so i'll also install container runtime here so yum just like we did in the master node yum install docker dash y press enter And Docker has been installed. System CTL system CTL enable Docker press enter and system CTL start Docker and then I'm gonna check the status and Docker has been successfully installed all right so um let me go back to the documentation so the commands i'm gonna be running in this worker node is also similar to what we did in the master okay so under installing kube adm kubelet and kubectl um so I selected Red Hat based distribution, so exactly what we did in the master. I'll copy this. Press enter. Go back. Press enter, copy this one, then copy the command that will be installing the kubelet, kubeadm, um, the kubeadm and kubectl2, alright, and I'm gonna copy this command. Okay, so the last command for this step is to restart the kubelet. Okay, there is a mistake. System CTL. All right, that is fine. Um, so right now I would like to join the worker node to the master. 
So let me go over to the master terminal. Actually, before I cleared this terminal, before I cleared my screen, um, there was a command that was displayed, you know, after we initialized the cube ADM, there was a joint command that was displayed, okay? So it was a mistake, I should have copied it out somewhere, but we can still print out the token right now, okay? So once we get the joint command back, then I'm gonna go over to the worker node and, you know, join the worker node with the master. Okay, so to get to retrieve the join command, all I need to do is to, I'm gonna copy the command. Okay, so this will create, um, uh, it to display or create a new token for joining so I'm just gonna copy this and then I'll go over to my my worker and I'll run this command okay run kubectl get node on the control plane to see this node join the cluster okay so we'll run kubectl get node in the master to see if this has if this um worker node has been joined successfully to the master okay so this is my master and i will run kubectl get nodes press enter and as you can see i have the um the control plane and the worker node okay keeps it here or get nodes ahead so right now both of them are showing not ready and um we need to set the pod network because it's actually the pod network that we've not set our pod network and that is why they're not ready okay so why do we need to set us to set the pod network we, sh we should set the pod network because with pod network um our pods should be able to communicate with each other and to do this we have to go back to our calico network okay so still in this page our calico network under manifest okay if i scroll down don't worry i'm gonna send this link i'm gonna drop it in the description below so you can use it for your for setting up yours okay so to deploy this um you can see download the calico network manifest for the kubernetes api data store so we'll be making use of the manifest and all i need to do is to copy this command once i copy it i'll go back to my to the master terminal and i'll paste this here press enter great and then i'll go back and you can customize the manifest if you want but we're not customizing anything i'll go over to number four and then apply it i'll paste this here press enter Okay, demon sets.app calico node created, deployment.app calico cube controllers created. All right, so let's run cube CTO get nodes again and see. Okay, it's not yet ready. Um, let's give it some time. Okay, as you can see, I ran the command again and it's now showing ready. So now the there will be communication between the nodes and the pods, um, basically the pods. Okay, so that is why we deploy this pod network. All right, so everything should be working well right now. If I run kubectl get pods, I don't really have any pod here, but if I If I run it in all namespaces, 
I should be able to see all the uh, Kubernetes components deployed as a pod. Okay, so all these are running in kubectm namespace as pods. Okay, so you can see we have our kube um, scheduler, the kube proxy, kube controller, kube API server, um, the etcd, code DNS, the calico, and all that. Okay, so um, just to demonstrate that everything is working perfectly, I can just, you know, deploy, um, let's just run a simple command to create a pod, kubectl run. I can name my pod uh, just my pod and then the image dash dash image should be nginx and um, just very simple okay so we should be good with this press enter and my pod has been created so if I run kubectl get pods gets pod in the default namespace you should see that my pod is running okay so we've successfully set up the kubernetes cluster using kube adm2 so right now you can go ahead to you know use your cluster deploy your applications and all that okay i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching please if you're yet to subscribe kindly subscribe like this video comment if you have any question i am i'll be right there to respond to your question okay also share this video with your friends thank you so much and i'm gonna see you in my next video thank you and bye